Chapter 26 continued. Joel was smiling. He thought and was a scary guy, and maybe if they put their best foot forward, they wouldn't be able to beat him. Yao and wanted to say something about the boy, but he just said that he didn't belong here, in his opinion, and should have moved on. Joel asked Yao and if he would accompany the group in the underground tunnels. It was safer than going on the road. Dad Ed Yao said to be careful anyway, because lower ranking demons could get in. Yao and replied that the squad was strong even without his help. The underground tunnels used to be used for the transportation system. Now they are abandoned and used for communication between cities. The warrior was running through an underground tunnel. He turned around and screamed. In a moment, blood was pouring out of his body. The devil held another guy by the head and said that these soldiers were very weak. The devil was lost. He did not understand how he managed to get lost underground. It was a second-ranked devil with unknown abilities and characteristics. He left behind a pile of dead bodies. His victims were 21 cadet warriors, 9 first-ranked core warriors, and 2 second-ranked core warriors. Chapter 27 The devil was holding the boy's head. All these soldiers were too weak for him. He was lost underground and did not understand how he had managed to do it. He was a second-ranked devil with unknown abilities and characteristics. He left a pile of dead soldiers behind him. His victims were 21 cadet soldiers, 9 soldiers with a first-ranked corps, and 2 soldiers with a second-ranked corps. Yu Wei took pictures of everything around her. She was happy to travel underground for the first time. She noticed that everything here was very old and asked when it was built. Yao Dang replied that this underground tunnel was older than he was. Yu Wei was taking pictures of a buck. She couldn't understand how people used to use this underground route. After the battle at dawn, many of the strongest warriors died. The number of power crystals needed to live had decreased dramatically. Yao Dang said sadly that without the support of the stones, a large number of underground tunnels fell into disrepair. They were built in the days of the great warrior and Yu Wei turned to her friend and said that all this was built in the time of his namesake. And was surprised, he replied that it was true. The guy bloomed with joy. Yao Dang was angry. Suddenly he started scolding him and saying that this was not his achievement and they just had the same name. Yao then told the boy to stop making fun of the memory of the greatest warrior and embarrassedly told the captain not to quarrel like that. Yu Wei and Zino Lan laughed at the captain's anger. Situ Lu was calm, although inside she was also laughing. Yao Ding coughed. He thought that he had relaxed too much and needed to keep himself in check. The man ordered him to keep the line and continue walking straight and thought about it. This once grandiose project. It was built according to his plan. However, there is something that Captain Yao and was wrong about. He thinks that these are underground tunnels. But in fact, there is a huge network of underground cities. At one time, not only cities were connected in this way. It was the safest and most prosperous trade route. And touched the wall. It was the greatest miracle of engineering at the time. And after his death, everything fell into disrepair. Zino Lan asked Yao Ding if the stones of life were similar to their demon course. The captain replied that they were. One demon core can provide energy for all the warriors. Then they tried many times to combine the course. And yet they successfully generated power crystals. They can provide the city with electricity for work, and now they are used instead of electricity. In A and S-ranked cities, they organize large-scale raids against demons to collect cores to create crystals. And then they are distributed lower down the hierarchy. Yao Dan explained that he was leading a group to City B not only to see how things were going, but also to pick up a batch of power crystals that had been allocated to their city. Yu Wei asked what would happen if the power crystal was discharged and there was no replacement. Yao Ding turned to her. He answered that the city would be immobilized. The squad looked at the commander in surprise. Without power, the city walls and defensive weapons would be useless. And then people will only have to leave their homes and wander. This machine is a real disaster. The squad listened to Yao and in confusion. Cardi said that they didn't have to worry, because one power crystal lasts for three months for the city of Halatsi. In addition, they take a crystal from Peida City every month to spare. Yu Wei thought that Captain Yao Deng would intimidate anyone. She grimaced behind him. Yao Deng hoped that the squad had prepared well, because Peida City not only had second ranked warriors, but also two warriors with third-ranked demon course. One of them is said to have a synchronization rate of an unprecedented 69%. Everyone was in awe of that warrior's power and thought that they had the strongest rank 7 warrior with a 96% core. Suddenly, Yu Wei saw a button. She wanted to press it, but suddenly and said not to touch it. A moment later, there was a boom. 
Yu Wei was sitting with a lump on her head and yout and was angrily telling her not to touch anything. The girl was upset because that button was very tempting. The captain explained that it was a button for emergency closing of the passage. It was used in emergency situations to close a section of the tunnel. Yowden drew the group's attention to the shutters on the ceiling. When a button is pressed, large metal latches slide out from the top and bottom. This is an emergency response plan to protect other tunnels and cities. And pauses to think. The most important function was still working. Suddenly, it was as if he was struck by a light. He felt a very strong aura. It was moving ahead and something was approaching with it. And activated his stone. Yowden was surprised. Suddenly, the captain felt blood, and felt it before anyone else. Yautin thought that the boy couldn't possibly feel better than him, and that he was really acting on instinct. But there was no time to be distracted now, and told everyone to prepare for the battle. Yautin told everyone to drop their backpacks and keep in formation. A moment later, they saw pools of blood. Everyone was surprised. Yautin realized that it was from the direction of Peda, but he did not understand what had happened there. Suddenly, they saw a shining red core. The captain thought it was a demon. A boy came out of the darkness to meet him. And then Yautin realized that he was a warrior from the city of Peda. The guy with the bloody wound in his body also realized that they were from the city of Halatsi. Suddenly his eye rolled back. The warrior fell to the ground. And then Yautin tried to ask him what had happened. The man could barely say that a wave of devils had suddenly swept into Peda's city. Peda had already signaled a retreat from the city. Yautin was shocked. Shi Tulu suddenly started shouting that they had to go there to help. The captain explained that this evacuation signal meant only one thing. All the soldiers of the city were dead. The squad could not believe what they were hearing, and was angry. The entire city was destroyed and no one knew how many people had been injured. Suddenly a light appeared in the darkness. It instantly hit the wounded warrior, and scolded himself for being distracted and not having time to react. The radiance carried the boy into the darkness. The devil's hand grabbed the warrior's head. He found him. Suddenly the devil saw the others. Smoke was coming out of his mouth. The soldier said that everyone should run away. Suddenly the devil told him that the dead do not talk and tore off the boy's head. The monster learned his lesson. He was going to continue the slaughter. It was the same second-ranked devil. Its core was red and its specialty was fire. His victims were 21 cadet warriors, 9 warriors with a first-ranked core and 2 warriors with a second-ranked core. Chapter 28. The devil took a step forward. He was going to continue the slaughter. He had a red power core and a fire core. He killed 21 cadets and 9 warriors with a first-ranked core and 2 warriors with a second-ranked core. The devil was happy to have met so many people. In his hand was a rope with a sharp fire blade at the end. He was unwinding the weapon and thinking about whom to start killing. After a moment, he decided. The fire blade flew towards the squad. The harpoon was right in front of Sino Lawn. Suddenly, a red glow flashed. Yao Deng covered the man and stopped the blade with his dagger. The man grabbed onto the red hot devil's weapon. He was hurt by the fiery blade. However, Yao Deng was able to throw the harpoon up with his hands. The devil was surprised. He told Yao and that he was much better than the others. The captain realized that the devil was stronger than he thought. His hands were shaking because of the hot blade. He could no longer deflect the monster's blows. Yautin was angry with himself for thinking about his strength instead of saving the cadets. A burned hand grabbed Anna. Yautin ran away with the rest of the group. The fire devil rushed after them. The flames flew all over the tunnel and caught up with the group. Yautin shouted to everyone to run away, and he would close the shutters behind them. The devil threatened to kill them all, but suddenly someone pushed them in the back and pushed everyone forward with force. The group flew over the metal shutters. Yautin turned to the boy and stuck his dagger into the ground. The devil said that the boy had only delayed the death of his friends. The monster ran toward the boy, threatening to kill them all, and stood up and pointed the dagger at the button. A moment later, he pierced the protective glass with his hand. The guy pushed the button and the metal shutters began to lower. Situlu rushed to En's rescue. The boy just turned around and asked her to take care of him. But Situlu kept calling him. The shutters were almost closed and only the boy's face and the devil's face were visible. The whole unit ran to his rescue. But the metal shutters fell down and Situlu could only scream for and through them. Yaudin remembered how the boy, before pushing them down, asked him to take care of the squad. The man calmly approached the cadets and asked them to calm down. And had given them a chance to survive and they could not let his kindness go to waste. It was dangerous there and they had to leave. 
Zino Lan indignantly said that even in could not resist the second rank devil. Yu Wei echoed his words. Situlu angrily suggested that they break the shutters, and Savin Yaodang explained that the shutters can withstand the power of a third rank devil at least. In addition, they are airtight and it is impossible to hear anything behind them. Unfortunately, there was no way to help him. The squad began to ask the captain to at least try. Sitalu suggested that they call Dada Jirao and Joel for help. Yaudan sadly replied that even with their help, nothing would happen. Suddenly, he remembered something. There was another way, and Yaudan told everyone to follow it. The group ran headlong through an underground tunnel. The captain explained that there was one fork that led to a Class A city. There they could ask for help. Yaudan stopped abruptly in front of the passage. Everyone ran down the dark tunnel to beg for help. The captain realized that they would do nothing more to fight. They could only hope that. Green demon blood splashed on the wall. Hope that him would survive. The guy pressed the button when the devil was in front of him. And stabbed it with his dagger. A moment later he kicked the monster. And it flew back. The boy fell to the ground. And was glad that he didn't have to pretend anymore. His course shone. And a red aura spread around him. The devil realized that him was just like him. Horns protruded from the boy's head. He calmly replied that he hadn't figured it out himself. And in a little more time he would have had to transform in front of his comrades. But now, Anna's eyes were burning with anger. He was very curious about how the devil controlled the fire. The demon thought that the boy was a first rank, but he realized that he did not have such an aura. Green trees wrapped around Anna's body. A moment later, the wooden shackles flew toward the demon. The monster said that he could easily overcome these vines if the boy was of the first rank. A large ball of fire threw the shackles away and looked at it calmly. The devil wanted to devour the boy and take these powers for himself. The ball of fire appeared in his mouth. In a moment, a huge stream of flames moved toward him. The boy quickly dodged and the fire hit the shutters. And flew under the stream of fire and found himself in front of the monster. The devil said that the boy had no chance, because he could not even touch him. The monster was on fire, and then flew behind it. A moment later he hit the monster's back with his water hose. The boy asked the demon why he thought he had only wooden vines. The demon did not understand how a person could have two powers, and grabbed its core and there was an explosion. Among the ashes stood in with the fireball in one hand and the devil's head in the other. Chapter 29 Ashes and smoke flew all around, and held the devil's fireball in one hand and the devil's head in the other. A piercing roar was heard, and turned around in surprise. The herd of devils was running toward him. He realized that the lower-ranked demons had come at the sound of the fight, and looked at the core. He wondered what kind of power he would get from a second-ranked devil. After a moment, he crushed the stone in his hand. The monsters were still running towards him, and raised his hand and said that from now on, the devil's flame would serve him. The boy's core began to shine. The fiery rays enveloped his body, and closed his eyes. A moment later, he took a step forward and everything behind him shone. He could feel the fire spreading throughout his body and overwhelming him. The evolution into a third-ranked demon was complete. The flow of lower rank devils did not end. Suddenly, and remembered, flames began to emerge from his mouth, just like a second rank devil. Lower rank demons were weak against fire. He let out a powerful stream of flames from his lungs, which was directed at the demons. After a while, and calmly walked out of the burning crowd of monsters. He wanted the screams of these demons to become a lullaby for all those who died in these tunnels, and walked forward, leaving behind clouds of ash and smoke. There was a large crack in the underground hatch. A moment later, a large stream of fire knocked it out of the ground, and climbed the stairs and thought that this was where the devils were able to enter the underground tunnels. When he got to the top, he was amazed. The lifeless bodies of soldiers and ordinary citizens lay around. Almost all the buildings were destroyed and burned. The city of Peidao was completely destroyed, and walked past the dead people. He thought that a particularly strong wave of devils had fallen on them. He saw a warrior's body pierced. The wooden vines always hit the target. A and imagined the devil killing this warrior. He came to a huge crack in the ground. He was afraid that a particularly bloodthirsty devil of the third rank had worked here, and imagined a huge fiery devil destroying everything around him with its flames. Suddenly, he remembered that Captain Yout and had told him about two third ranked warriors. A crow flew up from the ground. The bird flew upward and then turned around. He looked directly at the two warriors, pierced by vines, hovering above the ground. All the warriors of the third rank were dead, and remained silent. Wooden vines began to appear under his feet. He pointed them toward the crucified soldiers. 
The vines gently brought them down to the ground and then knelt down. With his hands, he covered the frightened eyes of the dead. He said that now they could sleep peacefully. These warriors fought bravely against demons. And yet this is part of any struggle. Suddenly, a boy's voice came from behind and telling him not to hurt the warriors. The boy was holding a dagger and crying. He could see that it was much stronger than the other demons and that he could take on a human form. The boy said that these warriors had saved his life and he would not stand by while the demon laughed at their deaths. He wanted to answer him, but realized that because of his appearance, this child would not believe him. Suddenly, the demon appeared next to the boy and was very surprised. The monster knocked the dagger out of the child's hand and the boy began to fall to the ground. Another demon also appeared on the other side, in a moment, and neutralized them. The boy was about to fall, but the warrior caught him. The city was still teeming with lower-ranking demons, and asked the boy to be quiet, because he could heal the wounds. The wooden vines had a healing feature. The boy asked him whether he was a devil or a human like them. His body began to go limp, and thought about it. He did not know whether he was a man or a demon. The boy continued to sit over the child's still body. A moment later, Lower rank demons ran toward him from all directions and stood up. It did not matter who he was. His goal never changed. He rushed to attack. He was going to destroy all the demons. Chapter 30 And stood up. It did not matter whether he was a man or a devil. His goal never changed. He ran to attack. He wanted to destroy all the demons. A wave of monsters moved toward Anna. Fiery wings appeared on the boy's body. In a moment, he was near the devils. Behind him, a shining ball appeared in the sky, which attracted the devil's attention. In a moment, this ball began to grow. The entire crowd of monsters was filled with huge wax spheres and landed. Flames appeared on his back, which increased his speed. It also exploded like phosphorus. The devils were scattered in different directions by the explosions and came up with an idea. He pushed off from the ground and flew towards one of the monsters. The devil flew into the sky from the spheres created by the boy and grabbed it by the throat and filled it with flames. The boy lifted the devil up a little. A moment later, the monster flew down at breakneck speed and was going to get rid of all the devils with one blow. It was a kind of surprise from him. There was a powerful explosion and rejoiced. By filling the demon's body with flames, a demon bomb was created. He realized that this method could be used many times. It was time to have fun. The monsters were screaming. They were running away from Anna. But the boy wasn't going to let them get away. He flew at breakneck speed toward the bunch of devils and landed near the monsters. It was too late to run away from them. After a while, he was standing on a pile of dead demons and remembered that his group was heading to the city of Peda to get the crystals. He did not know where they could be now. The energy core of the city of Halatsi could last for another three months. Without the crystals, their city would be in danger and was going to find the cache of power crystals and return with at least one. He looked around and thought about where to start. He couldn't act rashly and needed to figure out what he could use. Suddenly something came to Anu's mind. He could take the wooden vines. They were spreading in all directions. The power crystals could be found by their radiation. If and could search the entire city, he would find the radiation and understand where the vault was. The vines were braided all around and stood with his eyes closed, concentrating on the search. His green assistants looked in every corner. After a while, the boy managed to find it. He immediately rushed in that direction. The radiation was underground and could feel it faintly, which meant that the crystals were well hidden. The boy jumped down into the underground tunnel again. He looked around and realized that everything here was completely different and fell to the metal floor. There was a huge tower in front of him and he thought that it was a system for transporting power crystals for a Class B city. A fragmentary voice came to Donan's wound telling him that all the soldiers had to guard the crystals. The guy turned toward the passage and realized that it was an auto-broadcast. Most likely, that was where the vault was, and ran towards the passage hoping to find many power crystals. A moment later, his eyes were filled with surprise. There were dead soldiers in the middle of the hall and large power nuclei all around, and realized that the demons had already destroyed everything. All these warriors had fought to the death to protect the crystals. The goal of the monsters was to destroy the power crystals. They were definitely ordered to attack the vault. The boy noticed that the demons had become much smarter than before. There were no power crystals left. Anu had to go upstairs to get the equipment and start searching again. He told himself that he had to find more crystals. If something happened to his team, the city of Halatsi would be on the verge of apocalypse. 
and was going to find another city in three months and return to Halatsi with the crystals. The ruined vault doors were still smoking. Suddenly, red lights appeared in them. And pressed the pedals. The wheels spun quickly on the ground. The boy jumped out of the car from the ground. He was speeding down the empty street. And had black glasses on his face. He was on his way to find a new city. The car drove out of the city into an empty sandy field. The boy held the steering wheel tightly. There was nothing to see beyond the city walls and the fog was gathering by the evening. And was driving through the desert where a large city was buried in the sands. Ruined buildings stuck out of the ground. He thought that demons might be hiding in them. And looked at the map. There was supposed to be a city in this direction. The boy drove past abandoned houses, behind which someone was hiding. Suddenly, this someone cut the rope with a dagger. Huge wooden blocks began to fall in front of him. He quickly began to unscrew the steering wheel. He managed to turn around and not get trapped. The car stopped and then stepped to the ground. He looked around, not realizing what it was. At first, he thought it was demons, but then he saw ropes on the wooden beams. Someone's foot had stepped on a pile of them. The girl began to ask him who he was and what team of hunters he was from. The hunters lived outside the cities, in small groups, and had strict requirements for their warriors' abilities, and realized that he was out of luck because he had come across the real hunters. Chapter 31 Someone stepped on the huge beams and ordered him not to move. The girl pointed a gun at the boy and asked who he was and what team of hunters he was from. The hunters were the part of humanity that lived outside the city. They had strict requirements for the personal abilities of their warriors and realized that he was out of luck because he had met real hunters. The girl still demanded that the boy tell her name and did not think he could meet any hunters here. He threw up his hands and said that he was just a warrior and needed to pass through. The hunters lived outside the cities, so they did not have a permanent place of residence and their main task was to conduct reconnaissance and search for materials. The girl just laughed because city warriors never came here alone. She decided that him was a scout for the Silver Wolves hunting team and denied it and asked for a few minutes to explain. The girl pulled the trigger. The bullet quickly flew out of her weapon. But the girl did not shoot the boy. She just wanted to scare him. She told Anu to shut up because the other hunters were worse than demons. The girl was asking if her comrades from the Mark squad were still alive and thought about her words. He turned to the girl and said that he could not prove that he was an ordinary warrior now but she could not have a conversation while pointing a weapon at someone. The girl smiled, suddenly, and felt someone approaching. Surprised, the girl ordered no one to move. A moment later, blood poured from her hands and she started to fall backwards, and silently looked at the attackers. The guys on the motorcycles were surprised that there was still someone left from the Mark squad. They were going to take the girl as a trophy. It was a reconnaissance team of hunters called Silver Wolves. The girl dropped her weapon and fell to her knees. She realized which unit these guys were from. The girl's hands were injured, so she couldn't move them. Suddenly, someone grabbed her head, shocked that there was a girl here. The man pulled her by the hair to see her face. The girl was scared and angry. Then this hunter called another man to look at the beauty of the girl. They wanted to have fun first and then bring her to the boss. But suddenly and hit the hunter. The second hunter, whose name was MD, looked up in fright. The guy had landed on the wooden beams knifing the girl and the man and did not want to interfere in the showdown between the hunters, but it seemed that the boys had completely lost their fear. They had already ruined his mood today, so and advised them to get out of here. Silver Wolf thought he was facing a demon, and grabbed his weapon and smashed it with one blow. The guy noticed that he had already been attacked twice today. The hunter began to threaten him, but a moment later, the wooden vines threw the man high into the sky. The girl was surprised and delighted to see it all. The hunter flew away and fell to the ground. He realized that the boy had the core of a demon, but he could not understand whether the man was an or a monster. The boy raised up the hunter's weapon and repeated his question. His hand tightened and the weapon completely split, and smiled and said that they no longer cared who he was. With the flame in his hands, he took a step toward the hunter. A moment later, the man's desperate cry came. The green light enveloped the girl's wound, and asked her not to worry, because he would just slightly treat her wound. The man said that the bullet had hit the muscles in her arm and only needed to heal them. The girl thanked him. She silently turned back. The dead hunters of the silver wolves were lying on the ground. She looked at her hand in surprise, which no longer hurt. She had heard that warriors with a fourth-ranked core had special skills. They also worked like a miracle. She thought Anna was very cool. Suddenly, she looked at the boy with admiration 
thinking that he was a fifth-ranked core warrior, however, and felt the power of a second-ranked devil inside him. Even though he was stronger than an ordinary second-ranked core warrior, and smiled and said that he just had good healing skills. The girl remarked that a second-ranked core was also cool and generally thanked him for saving her life. She apologized for pointing the gun at him. The guy understood, because outside the city walls, you have to be careful at all times. In any case, Anu needed to get to the nearest town, so he asked the girl how to get there from here. The girl was silent for a while. She knew how to get to the city, but asked that and take her with him, and was surprised. They had just met and didn't even know each other's names, and the girl already wanted to go with him. He asked her why she wanted to go. The girl bit her lower lip and replied that there was a small C-class city nearby, Sinway, but it had been captured by silver wolves. A few days ago, her squad tried to free the city from the hunters, but they failed. Although at first they had a chance to win, but they didn't know that the captain of the silver wolves had recently received a third-ranked core and greatly increased his strength. Her captain was a second-ranked warrior and faced with a higher-ranked warrior. He lost. And only she was lucky enough to escape. The girl looked at him and said that if helping this city would not be a difficult task for him, she would beg him to help her. The boy thought about it. In his past life, although there were teams of hunters, it never came to this. He didn't understand who was in charge now and where they were looking. The girl said that she had heard that a team of silver wolves had taken over the city for the sake of a power crystal and did not understand how they dared to deprive the city and its inhabitants of the only source of energy. He stood up and told the girl that they were leaving. His aura was on fire. He was very angry. Chapter 32 And got up and told the girl that they were leaving. His aura was on fire. He was very angry. The walls of the city were near high mountains. And in the girl were traveling by car. She told him that the city of Sinway was right ahead. The boy replied that they needed to hide the car before entering the city. They stopped the car. And he got out of the car and thought that he never knew about this city in his past life, because it was not marked on the maps. Now it was occupied by silver wolves. Behind the boy, huge white teeth appeared. A.G. said that they needed to find out what the situation in the city was like, so they would go on foot. The girl was shocked. A bunch of demons were coming at Anna from the forest. But in a moment the wooden vines covered all the monsters. They pressed the devils firmly to the ground. The boy said that they would have to lie down quietly, because they could not let the monsters prevent them from entering the city. They could not get rid of the devils now because the smell of their blood could attract other demons. And turned to the girl and called her to follow him. She looked at the boy with admiration. The girl thought and was very strong, so they had a chance to save her friend's city. And looked at the city gate through the bushes. He was surprised that there were no guards there. The girl noticed that the city gate was open. Suddenly someone came out of the city carrying a boy in his arms and thought that someone was trying to escape. The big hand of the silver wolf reached out to the man who was carrying his son and begging for help. The hunter pinned the poor man to the ground. The girl pointed her weapon at the silver wolf, but in a moment, and stopped her. He said she would give away their location, so he was going to go himself. Suddenly, a huge clawed hand peeked out from behind the gate. The devil's paw grabbed the man and his child. They disappeared into the darkness of the city, leaving the hunters at the exit. In and his companion were surprised. He thought there was no point in coming up with a plan and preparing for an attack. He had to act and save as many people as possible. In a moment, and moved from his seat. By the time the girl realized what had happened, he had already neutralized two hunters. The girl ran to him, because she wanted to come here as well. She was surprised that the boy had so easily dealt with the silver wolf warriors. The girl looked at the warriors with disgust. It seemed as if their skin was rotten, and they looked as if they had died a long time ago. Outside the gate, there were many silver wolf warriors. The girl was surprised to see and neutralize them all in a matter of seconds. The boy thought that all these corpses were controlled by one devil with special abilities. He rushed forward again because there was no time to linger, and was running rapidly from side to side. He had to put an end to it. The boy went down to the ground. He looked at the thread that was attached to the warrior's head. He realized that it was tied to something. A devil with special powers could make them move by themselves. The boy was going to find him by following the trail of the dead, and told the girl that he was going to rescue the man and his son, and told her to search the city for any more living people. A moment later, the man disappeared from sight. He was jumping from roof to roof. After a while, he reached a castle with red windows, and quickly went to the gate. He landed and kicked open the door. 
Suddenly, horror and surprise froze on his face. A man and his son were hanging crucified on crosses. It was too late. The devil was sitting in front of the cores of power between which huge crosses were set. The monster said that everything in this place belonged to him. And this man seemed to be playing catch-up with his son, but in fact he wanted to escape from the city and cross the border. The monster got up and without turning to Anna told him to come over. He wanted to see who was visiting him. It was a third-ranked devil with a purple core. He had the skills of illusion in controlling the dead and saw the crystals behind the monster's back. He thought that the silver wolves had taken over the city for the power crystals, but he didn't know if they did it of their own free will or under the influence of the devil. The devil turned to the boy and realized that he was an outsider. He wondered if he was a human or a demon, and was angry. Devils with a purple core were quite rare, and they had special skills in managing illusions. The boy told the monster that he had killed all the silver wolves. And even if their commander could reach the third rank, he would not be able to fight him and his ability to control the dead.